Welcome to 1010 Pro Online. How are you tonight? I'm sure you uh, had a good rest today. And even as it's homework night, we're asking ourselves, why do we need to ask God to help us see the sins, the offenses that would mar that communion between God and us? How, what is it that we need to do to really allow uh, full access again into the Lord's presence? So the first thing we must remind ourselves is that sin actually leads us into a situation of condemnation, guilt and shame. Remember that uh, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is not to condemn us. The purpose of the Holy Spirit when He convicts us of sin is so that we can repent and be set free. Do you know that repentance is a gift of God and it's only been made possible because of the blood of Jesus Christ? If Jesus had never died, you can repent, but there's no avenue for forgiveness. So repentance is a bit like, uh, let me put it very simply. Imagine I wrote you a check. Let's say I wrote you a check of $1,000. That would be my gift to you. But until you cash in that check, the check has no value. In the same way, repentance is a bit like that. Jesus Christ has died on the cross to forgive us of all our sins. Now that doesn't mean it's a blanket check to do whatever we like. In other words, as much as He's forgiven our sins, He has removed the barrier between God and us. And so now what does God do? The Holy Spirit now comes to remind, to, to, to just convict us because we won't know what is our sin because we are sinful human beings. To us, sin is natural. To us, what is sinful to God is natural to us. So that's a big problem, don't you think? So the Holy Spirit comes in and says, look, if you continue this, it's an offense. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? So how do we come back into agreement? Ah, now use the check. Use the check. Remember, Jesus has forgiven you, your sins. But however, you need to agree with God that this thing that you are doing is called sin. So the moment you agree, the blanket, the check kicks in. The moment we agree, we're cashing out that check. And that is how we're cleansed from all guilt and shame. And that is the beauty of the blood of Jesus. And if we don't do that, there is an accuser that's standing before God's throne. And his name is called the devil. So turn with me to Revelation chapter 12 and look at just verse 10, second part of verse 10. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been held down and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So how do we... So there's a, an accuser, the devil, is every day accusing us before God. You know why? He knows that God cannot continue to continue to build that relationship with us if we continue to sin. Because that our sin denies God legal ground to act on our behalf. But remember, how can we overcome that? The blood of Jesus Christ. So what does that mean? Confess the sins back to God and now the blood of Jesus Christ can be given legal ground to forgive us our sins. And now the devil is silenced. Turn back with me to 1 John chapter 1 and then we're going to look at chapter 2 this time. So let's go back to 1 John chapter 1 and build on it a bit. So I'm going to read again from 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. This time I'm going to read to chapter 2 verse 2. All right. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now to be deceived is really the worst thing. Do you know that when we say this, one, this there's no such thing as sin, we are deceived and we keep on being deceived. But who is the great deceiver? We are not the master deceiver. The master deceiver is the devil. So we fall into his trap. Actually, we fall into his trap. That's the problem. So we don't want to go there. All right? But if we confess our sins, we allow the Holy Spirit to say, look, this is an offense before God. God is faithful. Faithful to what? Faithful to the promise. 
that if we confess our sins, the blood of Jesus Christ is able to cleanse us from all our sins. God is faithful to His promise. This is the promise of God. Just confess your sins and the power of the blood kicks in. But if we claim we have not sinned, no lah, this is not sin one lah. We make God out to be a liar and once more, we cannot cash that check. And look at chapter 2 verse 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for us, but also for the sins of the old world. So in other words, in fact, John is saying, my children, but how sure we will sin. But when we sin, do not continue in it. Rather, bring it before God. And indeed, there is an advocate. An advocate is a defense lawyer. So when the devil is accusing us, the defense lawyer, Jesus Christ, kicks in and says, no, I'm able to forgive his sin because my blood has spoken on his behalf. That's the power of what Jesus has done. That's the power of a Christian. That is why Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So what does confession of sin do? Number one, we are set free from condemnation. We are no longer under prison by the constant accusation of the devil. And we are also set free to commune with God. So the good news is no longer are we in condemnation, but we continue to commune with God and to enjoy that fellowship with God. And number three, as Jesus prayed, uh, forgive us our sins, you not lead me not into temptation. Actually, it's easier to run away from temptation. Once we, we confess a sin, that sin has no more any power over us. So it's easier for God not to lead us into that temptation and to deliver us from the evil one. So in summary, confession of sins brings no condemnation, consistent and con continual communication with the Lord and deliverance from the evil one's power over us. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good? So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I know all of us are afraid because we feel very guilty. But that is when we should draw near to God. Don't let the devil trap us into guilt. Because guilt is not from God. Freedom is from God. Amen? Isn't he good? Isn't he good? Oh, when I think about it, God, thank you. Thank you for this gift of repentance. Thank you. Thank you for this gift. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for that. Let's thank the Lord together. Heavenly Father, we really want to thank you that because of Jesus Christ, yes, Lord, God has legal ground to forgive me of all my sins and to cleanse me from all desire and roots of iniquity even. And Lord, we thank you that once we confess, Lord, we have a new start with you. We have communion with you. It is fresh every morning. And we thank you. Truly, you can have legal ground to deliver us from the evil one and for us to live in communion with you and for you, O oh Lord, to hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, so much, so much, so much. In Jesus' name, we give glory to Jesus who has made it possible for us to have our sins forgiven. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for this. Begin to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and say, Lord, there's now no condemnation, no guilt in me. Lord, I thank you. I can have continual communion and the devil will no longer have a foothold in my life. God is so good, isn't it? Isn't he so good? He is so good. God bless you. Go through again, 1 John chapter 1, go up to chapter 2, verse 2. You can go back to Psalm 66 to just remind yourself how wonderful it is to have a communion with God and not to let anything withhold God's love from us. God is really doing a great thing in our lives, showing to us that He is worthy of our time and our, our, our energy and all that we spend with Him. God bless you. Have a great night's rest.
Thank you.